Hello, this is Projectarian and I'm Jessie. I'm a crochet designer, but for this project I tried some techniques that are a little less familiar to me, such as needle felting and making fur from yarn. I made this project for Doll Eiffel's Tropical Doll collaboration in 2019, where the brief was to customize a toy with a tropical theme. So I used Atlas the Lion Cub, which is one of my own designs, and I turned him into a tropical jungle cat. This video will show you how I did it and maybe inspire you to try it yourself. It wasn't particularly difficult, it was just very time consuming. So if you want to try this, I must include a disclaimer. This will take you a long time. I got to work on mine like every day for as long as I wanted to and it still took me weeks to finish. So if you're not doing it full time, this project could take you months. It could even take the rest of your life if you die from boredom halfway through, which is a real possibility because it's incredibly repetitive and tedious and you kind of have to be obsessed to do a project this big or at least a bit crazy. And if you're not crazy in the beginning, you will be by the end of it. I used a South African brand of yarn called Charity because I like the kind of fur it makes. It makes a nice big tuft and it's really cheap, which is good for an experimental project like this one was. I thought I would need a variety of colors, so I gathered all of these, but in the end I only used black, pink, one shade of green and white. Using pictures of real tigers for reference, I started marking tiger stripes all over the body, but simplifying them because mine is on a smaller scale. You can use any kind of marker for this in any color. To give you an idea of what I'm going for, here's a color overlay showing how the stripes are going to be black and the main body is going to be green. I'm going to make the belly white with fewer black stripes. To make fur you'll need loose threads of yarn about 7 cm long. Wind the yarn around a piece of cardboard or your fingers, then cut the bundle open. The quickest way to attach the yarn is with a latch hook. Fold a thread of yarn in half and put it on the neck of your latch hook with the latch open. Insert your hook at the stitch where you want to attach the yarn. Notice that when you start pulling the hook back out, it starts closing the latch. Place the loose ends of yarn inside the latch as you remove the hook and that will create a knot. You'll be repeating this action a kajillion times to attach all the yarn to the body, so you will get quicker and better at it, but it's probably not the most fun you'll ever have. Brush the yarn out gently, starting at the ends and working your way up to the knot. The purpose is to detangle the yarn and turn it into fur. You don't want to leave any twists remaining in the yarn and you don't want to rip out any of the fur. When you're finished, it shouldn't have any twists or knots, it should just be a smooth, fluffy tuft of fur. There will be a ball of fluff in your brush that you'll need to clean out, and there will be tons of fluff by the time you finish the project. I'm keeping all of mine and keeping the colors separate so that I can try and use it for felting later. Once I had the hang of it, I started covering large areas at a time and then brushing it out. I like brushing towards bald skin first and working in really tiny sections to detangle the yarn thoroughly. Afterwards, I brush all the fur neatly in the right direction, working in sections. When I realized I'd made a mistake, on the inner thighs I used green yarn instead of white. I thought this would be a good chance to try out a buzz trimmer on the fur and see how it cuts. It really didn't work well at all. Maybe it's the type of trimmer that I used, but it just looks gross. So I won't be trimming any of the fur, but I do have to remove this anyway. I tried a few different methods and what worked best for me was using a crochet tool to grab the knot and pull the fur off. 
I originally made all of the black stripes two crochet stitches wide, but I didn't like how much black there was. So I removed some of the black yarn and replaced it with green or white, so all of the stripes are only one crochet stitch wide. Now that I know my black stripes are only going to be one crochet stitch wide, I can fill in the stripes first and fill in the remaining area with green. After doing the tiger's back, I moved on to the underbelly and then I did the tail. The tail is made up of double crochet stitches, so attaching the yarn there is a little bit different than attaching them to a single crochet because the stitch is longer. So on those stitches, I attached one thread in the loops between the rows and the second thread on the actual post of the double crochet. For the fur pattern on the tail, I didn't mark it out first because I wasn't sure how I wanted to do it, but I ended up looking at pictures of snow leopards and then freehanding my tail. I love how it turned out in the end, it's my favorite part of all the fur. In the crochet pattern for making Atlas, there are instructions for adding weights inside, so my cub does have weights inside the tail. Now that all the fur on the body is finally complete after many weeks, I'm drawing the face in more detail. I'm planning where the ears should go, making sure they're symmetrical, drawing the position of the eyes and the mouth. I'll be covering a portion of the head with fur, mainly the back and the cheeks, but I'm leaving the face completely bald because that's where I want to do the needle felting. Using a bigger cardboard stencil than before, I'm making longer fur for the sides of the head and the cheeks. I've made a stencil to mark out a patch for white fur inside each of the ears. And I've also made some cardboard ears with little tabs to pin on the head for reference. I want to make the muzzle blunt so I've ended the fur right at the edge of the chin. I cut some eye stencils to use as a guide for where the fur should end on the cheeks. Once all the fur is attached, I start brushing it out, working in rows. The longer the yarn is, the more carefully you need to brush it out, starting right at the end and working your way up towards the knot, so that you don't rip out any chunks of fur, but rather unravel it carefully. <laughs> As you can see, this long hair turned out pretty terrible. You can't see the stripes on the cheeks and it's just a muddy mess. So I pulled out almost all of the black yarn and replaced it with white, leaving just the topmost black stripe on the cheek. Now that all the fur is done, it's time to do the felting. Felting is usually done with roving made from wool or synthetic fibers. I'm using acrylic, it's what I've always done and it works for me. To make your roving, start off by cutting yourself a bundle of threads. The longer the better. Tie the bundle together, then holding it tightly, start brushing it out, working your way from the ends to the knot. For roving, it's really important to brush the yarn out gently and thoroughly. Any snags or knots that you rip out of the yarn, you won't be able to use those for felting anyway. If you work carefully, you'll end up with pure fluff in your brush and you'll be able to use all of that for felting. To start felting, just lay down a wad of roving where you want it and then start stabbing it with your felting needle and keep stabbing at it until it becomes firmly attached and turns into felt. When I got near the furry areas, I left the felted edge of the roving fuzzy so that it would blend better with the fur. This is just a very rough layer that I'm starting with. I'm just blocking in sections of color to see if this is actually going to work.
After messing around with the face a bit, I decided to stop and make the ears. These ears are going to be my first time ever making a solid standalone felted object, so let's see how it goes. I began by making a big bundle of black roving. On a felting sponge I lay down a piece of roving, then using my ear stencil as a guide I start felting a solid sheet that is the shape of my ear. Like I said, I've never done this before so I am going to make mistakes but you can learn from them. I build it up quite thick, probably about 3mm and once it's strong enough to hold itself together then I pull it off the sponge and start felting the other side. Then I take some white roving and roll it into a ball to start felting a spot on the back of the ear. I made both ears at the same time so that they're more likely to turn out the same. The white felting does show through on the other side of the ear, but I'm going to have a white tuft inside the ear that will cover that, so I'm not really worried about that. After checking if the ears fit, I'll add in those white tufts of fur. I trim the yarn, making it shorter near the front of the face and longer near the back. Then I'll brush it out. I won't attach the ears yet because I'm going to be handling the face a lot, so I'll attach them last. Now I can go back to felting the face. On the top of the head, I didn't like the abrupt transition between the smooth felting and the fur, so I'm just going to pull the roving off and then add some short rows of fur for a smoother transition. To make the transition even smoother, I'm parting the fur and felting it roughly just by stabbing it with my needle to blend it into the head a bit better. Remember, I'm using the roving that I kept from brushing out all the fur on the body. I thought it would work if I kept the colors separate, but ultimately they are contaminated. The green has black and white fibers in it and none of the colors are really pure, so the felting just looks dirty. So I had to remove all the felting from the whole head and start again. Moving along, I made myself a fresh clean batch of roving in all the colours that I needed and started over. I drew some more face detail on and started planning the black markings. If the marker transfers onto everything, you can just wipe it with a tissue to remove the excess ink. I've blocked in all the colors roughly and I'm pretty confident that this is actually going to work. I'm adding some extra fur on the bottom jaw and trimming it and then I'll brush it out. And this just goes to show that with making fur, um, nothing is permanent. If you make a mistake or you want to change something, it's really easy to undo it or add more fur, have less fur. You can also trim it before you brush it out or afterwards. Felting as well, it's not permanent. It's very easy to change something if you make a mistake. If you do it, something that you don't like, you just pull it off and redo it. I'm trying to conserve the shape of the tiger's head as I go. When you felt, it does create indents, so I'm just using my crochet tool to pull those back out. When I started doing the black on the nose here, the nose had already been built up quite a lot with pink, so all I did was lift up the pink and snip it off, and then I filled in that area with black. To 
To make thin lines like I have around the nose, I found it was a bit easier to first twist the fibers into a skinny spaghetti snake before felting them up. What's really cool is how you can build up the roving the same way as I made the ears. You can build up the roving on the face as well to create more of a 3D effect like I did on the muzzle here. For the under eye area I left the edge of it fuzzy so that there wouldn't be a harsh line between the smooth felting and the fur of the cheek. I don't like how this outline looks so I'm just gonna pull it off and try something else. I'm using a thread of yarn just to find the center of the face.
The hardest part to make symmetrical was the nose. Um, I, I doubt that the rest of the face is perfectly symmetrical, but on the nose it's really obvious that it's not. I used <laughs> everything I could think of to try and measure the symmetry. I don't have any experience with freehanding this sort of thing. It might be a bit frustrating to watch, as you can clearly see I'm ignoring the fact that one nostril is bigger than the other, but I will eventually fix that, don't worry. <laughs> In a brainwave of pure genius, it finally dawned on me to use an actual measuring tape to check the symmetry. I know, how did I even get this far? Now, as you may notice, felting needles are very thin and they break really easily. I've broken tons of them in my very short experience in needle felting. You have to stab the needle in straight and remove it straight. If you bend it, it will break. I managed to get this far in my project without breaking a needle, but my luck eventually ran out and it happened. I tried to get the needle out, but I couldn't even feel it inside the head, so I have no choice but to leave it inside. Finally, I've got the nose looking about as symmetrical as it's going to get. And once I was happy with all the markings, I moved on to the paws. I started by trimming some of the fur and then felting pink roving over the existing pink paw pads. Now this cub actually has weights inside his paws which are precisely in the area that I'm trying to felt. So I'm literally hitting this marble weight with every jab of my needle. It was just unavoidable so I worked really slowly and carefully and actually managed not to break another needle for the rest of the project. Once the toe beans and the paw pads were done, I decided to make the fur between the toes a bit thicker. I also wanted the fur to be a lot shorter, but I was worried about cutting it really short and having it fall off, so I just felted it roughly just by stabbing it with my needle and leaving it quite fuzzy. Now that the paw pads are finished, looking at them, I do wish that they were closer to the end of the leg, but that's something I couldn't have predicted going into this project, and if I did it again, which I won't because that's crazy, I would put the paw pads a bit closer to the end of the leg. I am really proud of him at this stage though, I think he looks super cute. 
And finally, in another wave of genius, it occurs to me to add more needles into my felting tool. It was life changing. Please don't be dumb like me. Use three needles whenever you can and only resort to using a single needle for finer detail when you have to. With my new leveled up weapon, I hollowed out the eyes. I cut some round stencils for the iris, pupils and highlights in the eyes. Then I made a batch of roving in all the different colors that I plan to use. I pinned my eye stencils on then traced around them and then I filled in that area with black. Which I have no footage of because it's obviously top secret and you're not allowed to see how I did it. Even though I definitely did it the same way as all the other felting. Here you can see how the inner eye stencils are intended to work. Using my very fancy trio of three needles, I start building up a white eyeball inside the black eye socket. For finer details, I'm using a single needle without the tool. I want to build it up quite round so that it looks like an eyeball, so I'll keep adding white roving. I'm going to start by trying to make a gradient of colour in the eye. I'm not really sure where I'm going with these eyes, but I am inspired by the way that Delightful paints some of her doll's eyes, so let's see where it takes us. I tried using the ears as makeshift eyelids to check if I was on the right track, but it wasn't really that helpful. I decided I needed a much darker purple to begin my gradient, so I added that to my palette of roving. When I started building up the darker gradient, I found it really hard to blend the colors. I did eventually figure out an easier way to do it, which I'll show you in a few minutes. I experimented with some dots inside the eyes, but I didn't like them, so I pulled them off. To blend the colors, I did try mixing them before felting them by just taking two colors and ripping them apart to blend them. It does work very well for making new colors, but not so well for blending gradients. The eyes still look a bit boring and flat, so I'm going to try dots again. I'm going for yellow ones this time with white dots in the center. Now I'm defining the iris with an emerald green rim that is fainter towards the lighter side of the eye at the bottom. I quite like how the eyes are looking right now. Um, the gradients in the middle obviously isn't blended at all, but I'm thinking these eyes need a pupil anyway. I try out some colors for the pupil and settle on a gradient of emerald green to dark purple. I cut a cardboard stencil for the eyelids and then I felted the eyelids the same way that I did the ears. They're going to be a small white crescent shape with a thin black line on the edge. They were a lot more difficult because they're small and skinny so I'm glad I practiced with the ears first. These really were not easy and my best advice for doing things like this that are really difficult and maybe you're scared to try is just start. Maybe it'll turn out amazing or maybe it'll turn out a mess, but anything that you do is practice and it will lead to improvement. I certainly wasn't born knowing how to do stuff just like every other human, so even if you're starting right at the bottom with no skills, just start.
even though this was really hard, it does seem like things are going well, doesn't it? But because this was my very first time felting solid objects, something was bound to go wrong and it did. Because the eyelid is so skinny and flimsy, I didn't want to lift it off the sponge until it was strong, but it didn't occur to me that I was felting it into the sponge. So I ended up having to tear the sponge to get it off. That sucks. I finished the eyelids off, leaving the outer edge of the crescent fuzzy for felting onto the face. And I made a set of bottom eyelids in the same way. I felted some white highlights inside the eyes, but I don't really like how they turned out. I think they bother me because they are mirror images, but they should actually be the same. I'm not sure, they just don't look quite right to me. Then I attached the eyelids, which is pretty straightforward. I just felted the fuzzy edge down, leaving the black edge free. I attached the top eyelids the same way, holding them in place with some pins. I wanted the gradients in the pupil to blend a bit more, so I worked on that. In the end, the best way that I found for blending a gradient is just lay a loose piece of roving on and start felting it roughly. When you like how the gradient looks, then just cut it off and just felt in any remaining fuzz that's left over after trimming. The eyes looked a bit bulgy, so I built up the area all around them with more roving, matching the colors and markings that were already there. To attach the ears, I separated the fur neatly so that the white tuft would be inside the ear. I felted the edge of the ear straight onto the head and just kept going until the ear felt like it was firmly attached. You can use pins to hold the ears in place while you're felting. I felted some of the fur behind the ears and then I trimmed the fur a bit. I neatly separated the white tuft from the green fur, then I felted the edge of the white tuft to keep it separate from the green and brushed the green in a different direction. Then I trimmed the white fur inside the ears until you could see the black edge of the ears. The very last step is to trim the cheeks. I started off really gingerly, pointing my scissors towards the face. I didn't want to cut any harsh lines in the fur. I spent ages trimming like this until I realized the fur is actually really forgiving and you can literally cut straight lines into it and they won't even show up. Once I realized that, things went a lot quicker. I didn't expect to make the cheek fur so short, but I just kept trimming until I liked how it looked. With this yarn, when you brush it out, it leaves wispy ends, and when I trimmed those away, the fur was just really dense and plush like a bunny. Although I must add that when you handle it, it does clump together anyway and look a bit rough. And finally, I have finished the Tropical Jungle Cat. In Catherine's original rules for the collaboration submissions, she didn't exclude plushies, so I went ahead and spent a whole month on this project, 
and it was only at the end when I was ready to submit my picture that I saw she had added a new rule excluding plushies. But I decided to submit it anyway. I wanted to show Catherine and I really enjoyed the project. The collaboration was a nice excuse to try something new. So I sent her the picture anyway. And when Catherine saw my picture, she was so sad that she actually changed the rules just so that my cub could be in her video. I thought that was really kind of her, so thank you Catherine. There are links to Delightful's videos in the description box. Thanks for watching, I hope this was useful. Please don't try this at home, but if you do, take pictures.